standing there and I have one foot on the log and I have one foot on the platform and like you can see me going all right bitch just step just do it you go you're in control of your body what's gonna happen your hands stop working that's normal just grab shit like you're on the thing you're fine and I took my deep breath and my foot left the platform and my mind went no most of the time an alligator will see a kayak and go okay that's bigger than me and not fuck with your kayak mm -hmm. unless it's mating season and I learned that the hard way I had an alligator hit my kayak and it scared the Jesus out of me. The men's group has changed my life more than it has changed theirs. I've been watching, I've been watching you guys go and go and brag and like, I got all these new clients. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And I've been like, well, you know, I kind of got some things working and I'm trying to get this consulting gig and da, 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 da. In the last 24 hours, I got all of it. Everything just 24 hours. I would do a lot of illegal things for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. We are back. We're back. Doing the Peaches talk. Super quiet. Is that really what I sound like? Sometimes. Huh. And we are back. We're back. Just in case that doesn't come through on the audio. Just in case, <laughs> Just yeah. In case. It's smart. This is... Episode 30-something. I actually think this is episode 37, but my brain is telling me it's 38. The the um, lack of confidence is there. So while you open the box, what's in the box? I'm going to pull up the cheat sheet to tell me what I've already uploaded and what I have not so that we actually, I don't look like a scrub. We have a wedding invitation. Do we? We do. I love those. I'm super stoked that we're just getting more and more of them. Before you get into that, guys, um, if you are a long-term follower, yep, yeah, 37. If you are a long-term follower of the podcast, episode one, was it episode one that we read that really heartfelt email? Yes. We have a response that will be read in this podcast today from the original emailer. I'm almost certain it was in episode one. Yeah. Yeah. We also have an email from Anya. You remember her? Yes. Yeah, from South Africa. I do, yeah. I remembered her name. Yeah. And I emailed her thinking that she was the original email because they both started with an A. Mm. Uh, and I was wrong. But she emailed us back. And she was super stoked that we remembered her and like yeah. checked in on her and shit. And that made me feel kind of good. And then I felt like an ass. I was like, you weren't the person I meant to email, but I was going to email you anyways because <laughs> I want to talk to everyone that we emailed. And So if you have been here since the beginning and we read your emails within the first four months or first four episodes, email us, please. I would yes. love an update from you guys. That way, you're not shocked when you get an email. <laughs> All right, let's get into the wedding invitation. Um, so the back of the wedding invitation has a handwritten letter on it. Ooh. So it says, to be better, thank you for exemplifying to the world what a healthy traditional relationship looks like. My soon-to-be wife and I are so much like you too, and we've had some amazing talks because of your podcast. Thank you for showing in such a public way what healthy masculinity and submission looks like. People in our lives don't understand our dynamic, so we feel like we are in good company when we watch the pod. We know that two months is short notice to come for this, but we wanted to at least invite you because you've both been a great influence to us. I know that Peaches has really helped Letty, my wife-to-be, see that it's okay to submit to the right man. So man-to-man, -man, thank you, Chris, for being another good man. Where, where, where did it come from? What state? Um... Arkansas. Okay. Yeah, it's two months is probably too short of a notice. I apologize. That's Alaska. Oh. AK? Yes. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh too short of a notice. I'd love to go to Alaska. Right. Though. Well, I mean, we have somebody okay, so we actually have someone in Alaska who has an Airbnb who has offered to let us stay there. What? Yeah. The problem is is you have to get there by train and if you don't have your own food coming in and out of there, you are fucked. So like it's a lot to bring and you can't leave you can't leave the house without without a firearm like you are the wildlife there. The actual wildlife looks at you like you're a zoo animal. It's quite strange. I would love to experience that for a week. Yeah, I would like a couple days. Yeah. 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 I, don't know. I would want one week. Yeah. Yeah. In the middle of the wilderness. I would go yeah. fucking stir crazy. Oh, I would love it. Yeah. What do you got there? Uh, so this is a box uh, from the Glittered Panda. She is on Instagram and TikTok if you guys want to check her out. 
I was almost certain she was in the Discord. Are these our cups? I think so, yeah. She's in the Discord, right? I don't I don't think she is. I, I don't know. Where did the cups... Oh, I remember interacting with her. I'm almost positive these are our black cups. Oh, she emailed us. She emailed us. <laughs> That's what it was. She emailed us. There's glow bracelets in here. Oh, the kids are going to love that. We're about to play some hide and seek at night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there's a little letter. And it says Chris and Peaches. Oh, this is full, full. And there's lots of things. Bunch of stickers. I love that. All right. I hope you guys love your cups. The black was such a simple design that I couldn't let that be all I sent. I made a couple more things for you as well. Sorry, Chris. You probably won't want either. LOL. I also know how my, how my kids are if they see me open a package. They try to take over, so I sent them a pack of glow bracelets. That's dope. That is really dope. Thank you. The kids are going to be really excited about that. Yep. My kids act like they are gold or something. Anyway, I just wanted to thank you for opening my eyes to many things. We haven't gotten far on working on things just yet, but until then, I am trying to work on myself, mostly on being a better mother. I feel the pressure of that more than anything right now. My boys, I'm not going to say their names, uh, 11, 9, 7, and soon to be two-year-old. It's a lot of boys. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also have a four-year-old girl and a stepson who is 10. Y'all got a baseball team. Almost. Three Soccer away. team. I don't know. Baseball's well, nine. That's a lot of kids. You do it right. You got someone to take care of you when you're old. Yeah. That's a lot to miss. Like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they will be gone before I know it, and I don't want them to remember this mom. So the clock is ticking. I'm so glad I found you. Also, it's so exciting to watch you guys grow like you are. That's going to make me cry, yep. knowing that we are affecting change in mothers who want to be better moms. Yeah. It's crazy to me to hear people. Can, can you wait on that for a minute? Yeah. For us to have people in our real life that are actively, they are making the decision to ignore what we are doing. We have people in our lives who are not rooting for us. Right. That are in our lives. We have people that are we're very close to that don't watch this. We have we have people that want to see us do well, but don't want to support us doing well. Mm -hmm. And then we have other people who are that we've never met before that are on the sidelines, like straight cheerleading for what we're doing. It feels good. It does feel good. It's crazy to me that like we're getting the support that we're getting from people we don't know. Yeah, it's, I almost don't know what to do with this level of support. I, I've never experienced anything like this. Yeah. We're getting wedding. I mean, obviously, I think we I, I know that we kind of ask for the wedding invitations that yeah. it's a nice thing. But I think that those people are sincere when they send those. I don't think yeah. that they would send them if they weren't just serious about it. Right. But what does that say about like people know us mm -hmm. right when they see us in public? They, they 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 have a relationship with us because of the content we're putting out. We don't know them. Yeah. So like today at the Mercedes dealership, that young man, he lit the fuck up, dude. Like he went from, hey, what can I do for you? And like I started talking about the brake light and he's like. And then shitty and Cheshire grin smile. And I'm like, what? Like, the fuck are you smiling at? <laughs> and he's like, I know you. And I was like, from? And he's like, I watch your podcast. He was super fucking stoked. He was like an 18 or 19 year old kid. That's amazing. He shook my hand like a man. Holy shit. No limp dick pussy handshake. Like he yeah. shook my fucking hand. He went for he it. He did. Respect. He fucking did. But it dawned on me in that moment that that kid has a relationship with us because of our podcast, even though I don't know him. Yeah. So... For the people that are in our lives by proxy to support us the way that we are supported and the way that the people in our lives do not says a lot about the people who you surround yourself with. It really fucking does. We do have two or three people who are yeah, we do. avid supporters of the podcast. I'm not saying that we don't have supporters. It's just it's not the same thing. Yeah, it is a very there are people who don't even acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. You know, the, you see the small business sharing the post on Facebook all the time that say it costs you nothing to support your friends who have a small business. Yeah. And you see the other memes, memes that say like cost of sharing, uh, cost of supporting small business, sharing a post, zero, telling your friends, zero, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then there's the other one that you always see is you'll spend $150 on a pair of Jordans and not ask questions about it, but you, you'll haggle your friends on their business. 
Yeah. Like it, that's what it comes down to. Two, true people support what you're doing. They share, they like try yeah. to hype you up. They want to see you do well. Those are the people that you want to surround yourself with. Those are the people that you want in your corner because they're not praying for your downfall. They're truly pushing your success because it makes them feel good to see other people doing well. It's a dying thing. It really is. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, she sent any issues. Oh, extra stones. Don't microwave. Don't leave an extreme heat or sun. Well, that's Florida. The epoxy will soften. And the adhesive for the stones as well. You can scrub the stones with any scrub. Brush with soap and water. Okay. I'm assuming don't dishwash. Yeah, I don't know what those are even for. Uh, they're extra rhinestones for the cups. Oh. They're little thingies in here. Oh, I love it. I, I was dead ass just looking for a new key thing. And it's a Monstera leaf, and it's not as cool as that looks. Oh, well. You didn't hang that from your window or something? Yeah, I might actually use it for my keys. I love that. That's awesome. I don't know what this is. It's a bin. Nice. Oh, it's all glittery, too. I'm going to have to hide this from our daughter. Oh, she's going to want that. Do you, do you see how you feel with that pin in your hand right now? Yeah. Do you understand why I was looking at Mont Blancs the other day? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's candy in here. I might not tell the kids about that. Oh, heck yeah. Jawbreakers and shit. I might save these for me. They get the glow sticks. So I don't get the candy. I'm getting the cups. Would you like the candy? I, I don't want the candy. I don't. I'm not a candy person. All right. Two straws. One shorter than the other because one cup is shorter than the other. That makes a lot of sense. So this one has your name on it. Would you like to open I it? I would. So I'm assuming the black straw goes with that cup. I like that she did the wax seal. Me too. And she actually did the press. What's on yours? Um, It looks like a Celtic knot. Mine's a little bee. You are really doing the bee thing. I you love You really them. are doing the bee thing. What do you mean the bee thing? Because people recognize... I, I was trying... I didn't break it, but it's that wax is really around that twine and I don't want to... I don't oh, want to break the seal. I don't want to break it either. Right. I like that. Anyways, you're doing the bee thing. Like people are starting to equate the pollinators to you because you joke about that so much that like. I love that. People, it's happening though. That's awesome. Look, Remember Brittany with the soap? Yeah. Right. Then we got the other wedding. I mean, their wedding card was bee themed, but I was so stoked to get that. Guys, I don't know if I've ever told you the story, but I'm going to tell you the story. There was a time when I, Chris and I were still having sleepovers. And I had a wardrobe malfunction. I needed a knife. <laughs> I was like, hey, babe, do you have a knife? He was like, yeah, it's next to my computer. I was like, okay. And literally 15 seconds later, hey, babe, do you have Band-Aids? <laughs> <laughs> the webbing right in between my fingers. I got it good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see. This is very nicely wrapped. All right, I, I'm I'm kind of, oh, it's paper. I had a moment where I was like, oh, shit, did she send me a white cup because she saw the inside of my car? <laughs> this is what nap time hustle looks like. Thanks for supporting this mama-owned business. Nap what, time hustle, I like that. Is that what the name of the business is? What is it's? What was the, the name on the box? Do you remember? Well, her name is. Glittered Panda. Oh, that's fucking dope. It doesn't... I think nap time hustle is just the thing. Like, I do this when the kids nap. That makes sense. Yeah. That would actually be a clever business name. If that's not actually her website, that needs to happen. You should buy that before... That looks good. Someone else does. Yeah, that's Gangster, right? The 2B Better logo. Mine feels glittery. The the nice 2B B. So, fun fact. Oh, yours is definitely different. That motherfucker's done. It says peaches. Wow. She went above and beyond on that. Holy oh my gosh. shit. Is that, the, um, is that the type of art my mom does? Um, but on a cup? Yes. The diamond painting. Wow. That looks really good. This is going to be my new everyday cup. That's gangster. 
I love that. What I was saying before I, I, I got wowed by her cup. Yeah. This to be better logo, if you can see that on the camera, is was designed by someone in our Discord. It was. Right. I I really like this matte black. Me too. The matte black looks really good. Yep. You know, this is the second person to send us cups. I love receiving cups. I think this is my favorite thing. I yeah. mean, everything received is absolutely amazing. Just what else did you? When did you get another um, cup? Jill Pill sent the Ravenclaw cup with a little sorting hat on the straw. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yep. That's wild. Very cool. That's and I like the the tall cylindrical like not shaped. It's just one like size all the way down. Yeah. I don't know. It looks like she put epoxy or something on the bottom so it doesn't yeah. wobble around. If it was like Oh, there's a, a little butterfly in here. That's like a vinyl sticker or something. I don't know. Y'all who make cups are just baffling to me. The amount of patience this takes. Oh god, this is in there good. You can do it, woman. Oh, because it twists. So I would like to do both of the emails, one from uh, I have both of them up. Dope. Well, then I'll just shut the fuck up and <laughs> we can run it. At some point in probably the next 20 minutes, I'm going to have to jump up and run to the front door. Okay. Um, so I'm going to read through this quick. Not quick. Never mind, because this is very long. Okay. All right. So this is from one of our first emailers ever. And... um. Not going to say her name, but her email touched us and really made us recognize like we are doing the right thing with that the was, podcast. That, yeah. that was the one that got read last on, on the first pod. Yeah. Okay. So yep. this is the, the follow up to that. Okay. Dear Chris and Peaches, I love your new nickname. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. I tried to answer earlier this week, but was not able to find the right words. Long story short, we are still married and in love, but a lot happened. A few months after the first email I sent you, I had the pleasure to see my husband being promoted with a 28% salary increase. That's huge. Right? That's huge. It's a huge raise. Yeah. Kind of crazy what the right energy can bring in a relationship, huh? Unfortunately, a difficult event happened, and since then, life is not the same, and for a while, I sincerely thought it never would be. It's so crazy how life just changes like that. Yeah. I think about both of you on a daily basis, and I still watch your videos and listen to your podcast. My husband's and I relationship was, of course, impacted, as well as our dynamic and intimacy and connection. We are slowly adjusting to our new day-to-day -day life and reconnecting now that things are settling down a bit. It's not easy, and to be honest, I cry a lot, which is unusual. We have external help, therapists and such, so there's that. My husband is deeply saddened, and we seem to be going through a grief process, so it's a lot. We were supposed to go to Scotland in October for our honeymoon, but this event cost us vacation days, money, and such, so we have to postpone it, which makes me sad a bit. I try to hang on to the idea that once we go into 2024, we'll enjoy it even more. Everything I learned from you and still learn helps me to not lose myself and not forget the foundation of my marriage. Even on the days I feel like the loneliest soul on earth, today is one of those days. This sucks. Yeah, it, it's a lot. It, I mean... It, it, it is a lot. Go ahead, because I want to say something. Go ahead, because I'm not going to forget what I'm going to say. This isn't the update I was expecting. Right. Right. But that's life. That is That really is life. And knowing that she still has the strength to power through it, and, through it and recognize there is light at the end of the tunnel. I just need to figure out how long this fucking tunnel is. Right. They in this strained their relationship but did not put them at odds against each other yeah so the 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 shift in the way things feel is is still normal mm -hmm. like you don't you're not fighting and, and like hating each other and like so that love and that that trust and intimacy and, and is still there right right the other thing that i was going to say was that um we have people that we have built a rapport with that have emailed in mm -hmm. the monster slayer and her kids um danish um, Jenna, Sabrina, right. Heather, obviously Heather, Jen A. You have your dudes. I have all my guys. Yeah, you're I, just listing I, a bunch of women. Well, <laughs> because those are the people that on uh, the people that listen to the podcast might recognize those names. If right. I if I mention all the guy names, Steve is going to be the only one that's like recognized in Dakota. Zach obviously would be too, but there's a bunch of other people in there that I've got a rapport with. Mm. 
But when we hear things like this, my life is, is having this great, horrible thing and I'm crying and I feel alone today. Like I want people to email us that we have a rapport with when that's right. going on. You know what I mean? Like it, it, even if we don't get back to them, right? Even if we just ignored that email and never replied, which you know would not happen. But even if it did, mm-hmm. putting that shit into word is in, into a text format and sending it off is no different than writing it in a journal. Right. That's true. Since you brought up my men's group, I'm going to brag for a minute. Okay. Uh, and I put this in my vlog today. I know that you haven't had a chance to watch it yet. I, I realized while driving to Sarasota today that my, the, the men's group, has changed my life more than it has changed theirs. Okay. I am at a position in the men's group where I am benefiting twofold, right? Obviously, I'm getting paid to provide a service for them, which I, I feel like I'm I'm holding my end of things. The other end of that is that the point of the men's group is that the men in the men's group is growing. Right. Their growth. Steve is doing the thing in terms of business. Um, he's getting all of his shit under control. Dakota's growing his business. <clears throat> Joke is doing the dad thing and like trying to really get his shit together there. AJ's doing his thing over there. And like, I got all these men around me that are leveling up and doing shit. And over the last two months, I've been working behind the scenes trying to get it because I've been watching them do things, right? I've been watching. I've been watching you guys go and go and brag. And like, I got all these new clients. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And I've been like, well, you know, I kind of got some things working. And I'm trying to get this consulting gig and da-da-da-da. In the last 24 hours, I got all of it. Everything just in 24 hours. I realize that my want to push myself into doing those things and the amount of time that I've spent working with Jordan, the men's group has pushed me to do more than I would have done on my own. Because I would have been working one angle at a time because we have the podcast and the other businesses and like my relation, our relationship. Um, I almost said my relationship with my wife, like you weren't sitting here, but <coughs> um, I'm getting so used to podcasting that or to um, vlogging yeah. that I have to work on my not talking like that. I don't want third person shit. Anyways, yeah, I appreciate uh, you speaking to me like I'm sitting here. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate you sitting there. Yeah. It's way more entertaining than talking to a camera. Um. But iron sharpens iron, and mm-hmm. I don't think that I would have accomplished as much as I have in the last 48 hours if I would not have had all of those other men around me succeeding in the shit that they're doing. It's fucking wild. Can't be the only one not doing something. Right, and I'm supposed to be the one that's leading the groups. Like, it, how how fucked up would that be if I'm, yeah. read these books, guys, do these workouts, go on these dates, have this life, and I'm over here like this, just watching from behind a screen telling you guys what to do with, and I'm not implementing these things on my own. Right. Just a lot to think about. So back to the email, we are slowly adjusting to our new day to day life and reconnecting now that things are settling down a bit. And I just read that. My husband is deeply saddened and we seem to be going through a grief process. So it's a lot. I, I just read all that shit too. Where the fuck am I? I try to make sure that I take the time to remind my husband that I'm here and I'm not going to go anywhere. I stopped packing his lunch for a few weeks when it happened, as everything was just too much. I think we both spent a few weeks on one meal a day trying to not throw up. As soon as I started to do it again a few weeks ago, I started feeling a bit better. It's stupid for a lot of women, but for me, it meant that despite challenges, him and I will always find a way to love each other and take care of ourselves with little gestures. Isn't this such a dope thing to hear? It really is. I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> It's it's a lot when people are able to articulate themselves that way. Yeah, you know what I mean. Because some people have just been like, "It's the little things," and just move past it, not being able to like really explain what those little things are. That was very well said. It was. Those acts of service, especially in hard times, go a long way too. I'm sure that those little notes coming back and those lunches being made, you know, like made made a world of difference to his yeah. his you know mindset. Probably made him feel better too. Yeah, yeah. A sense of normalcy for him as well. But at least we are together, and that's all that matters to me. And I know that once the sun will shine again, we'll be enjoying it together stronger than ever, wherever we are on this planet. We said yes for better or worse, right? Well, I guess the worst is happening right now, and we can't wait for the better. Lots of love. Hope you're doing well. It's crazy to see the original email right underneath it, and it was sent December 12th. I mean, December 15th of 2020. At 7.52 p.m., we were leaving a movie. Yeah, it was midnight, and we were driving home. And I remember reading it out loud, and we were both crying in the yep. car. 
it's crazy to see just how everything's changed. Yeah, it really is. There's a lot of reflection for me. Like in, in the moment when we hear these things, like it's not just the email that I'm hearing. It's it's the past seven months, eight months of our life, you know. Right. But to hear that their lives have continued going and we're not just getting a everything is great. Thanks for reaching out email like she's being honest and vulnerable. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it, it, it's just a lot. There's a whole lot in that, in that email, though, that is being said without being said. We are going through one of the most trying times of our lives together. And we're not at odds. Yeah. Like things sucked for a little while and we were processing and grieving the way that we had to do so, but we're still fucking doing it. You know what I mean? Like, that says everything about the foundation of their relationship. Yes, yes, it fucking does, dude. Yes, it does. All right. So next email. Uh, it says first emailer. Was her email the first one? It we wasn't, read? but I emailed her and said that it was. Uh, that's that's the South the Anya. Anya from South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you remember? You remember what that felt like? Do you remember what that felt like when what we got that mean? email and you're like, "This this email came from South Africa." Yeah, that was insane. Right? Absolutely insane to me. Right. I couldn't believe that we reached somewhere outside of America, and now we're all over the place. Yeah. Japan, Sweden, New Zealand, um, Australia, Bulgaria. Yeah, we're actually pretty big in Bulgaria. Shout out to all our Bulgaria listeners. Really, we're pretty yeah, big in Bulgaria. We, we are. We're in the top ten out there. What's up, Bulgaria? Yeah. Yep. Thanks for the support, guys. Yep. Netherlands, Norway. Um, I've seen Greece. Greece. Yeah. Wild. Thank you for everybody who listens to us. Yeah. I, I can't believe. I never thought my voice would ever reach Washington State. Like, yeah. <laughs> and yep. now we're across countries. You, you know what... Uh, Last night before we had our poker game, one of the players told me that he he actually listens to our, our content quite a bit. And he's like, you realize that all you're doing is telling people to be good human beings. Yeah. He's like, you you have an entire platform just basically telling people basic common sense, good human being shit. And I was like, yeah, it's wild. He's like, it it is insane to me how many people have parents out there who just overall failed them as a person. They don't understand manners. They don't understand the right way to live. I mean, he's a little bit older than we are, but still like that. And he might actually be my age. Either way, though, like that, that moral is just not there anymore. The moral compass is so broken that no matter where you spit, sit, it just spins. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's wild to me that we are where we are still. Like there's just. It's surreal. Mm -hmm. It's very surreal. Mm -hmm. So into the email. Hi, hello. Oh my goodness, what an absolute wonderful email to receive. It's been so long since we last spoke. I have been getting ready to send you guys an email for quite some time. Life is going so good and I hope things are going good for you guys too. My marriage is thriving since I started listening to you and Peaches. My husband owns a borehole drilling company, also known as Water Wells. So it goes without saying that he works fucking hard every day from 5 a.m. to 6 to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. This man works so hard to provide for our kids and I. I'm a stay-at-home mom, but I run my husband's company so I can work from home. My kids are three and five, and they are home with me during the day. My husband and I have been together for six years and married for one. The beginning of our relationship, things were great. Then I fell pregnant at the age of 19, and this put a lot of strain on our relationship because we never had the chance to build a proper foundation before we had kids. Two years after my daughter was born, I fell pregnant with our son, and we only got married last year. We did everything backwards when it comes to relationships. Things really started to change for us when I started listening to your podcast, which I will forever be grateful for because I have become the wife that I wanted to be and that my husband deserves. That's an impactful sentence. That cup looks really good. I love it. Yep. I really feel like this matches my vibe. Yeah, it does. That is, that, yeah. it, as long as you don't get that dirty, like you don't touch it while you're planting or whatever. Right. It, it's very pristine. Like it yeah. feels clean to me. Let's say it gives me a very like scientific lab sanitized. <laughs> but I'm there bougie in my sparkling lab coat. With, with a, a, a mask that's got gems like rhinestones yeah. all over them. Everybody else is in like the cheap dollar paper masks and you're like in a 
a bougie Michael Jackson mask. Yes. Can I get like glasses that are rhinestone? I too? mean, you could. They make them. I, I have a story. I'm going to tell it. Okay. There, there is a tattoo artist. I, I really want to name him, but I'm not going to. That I know who is probably 60 to 70 years old at this point, And he wears a like fedora style. And fedora is not the right word. He wears a big hat. Okay. And he wears these rhinestone glasses. Yeah. And they are fucking huge rhinestone glasses. And it's not like rhinestone. It's like Baccarat crystal and shit. And his glasses are expensive. Holy shit. But when you when you see, he's got like real Elton John vibes going, right? I love this. I don't know if I could, if I could like, if you wanted to do the rhinestone glasses, I would support you doing whatever makes you happy. But I, I would have a hard time taking you serious if you were wearing those kind of glasses. Good. That's okay. the intention. <laughs> <laughs> I have a hard time taking you seriously when you're wearing your heart glasses. Oh, my sunglasses? Yeah. I don't think anybody took me seriously today at Trio. No. 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 There was, but you were happy, so fuck them. There was a point where I was... the So it was a walking, like the plank, massive plate space and plank, but the bridge was twisting. Yeah. So you couldn't walk the wood. You had to walk the cord. And I'm in the middle at the twist, standing there holding onto this thing. And I look down, there's a fucking lizard just jumping. And I was like... Fucking show off. <laughs> Fuck you. All right. Nature did you one. And I heard the guy down there just laughing at me. And I'm like, I'm fucking terrified, guys. Like, <laughs> me joking is a coping mechanism. Did you mechanism. actually say that out loud to I Blizzard? Did. <laughs> yeah. And I kept going. And I was like, well, I guess I have opposable thumbs. So I have that going for me. That's funny. Get fucked, little lizard. Fuck you. Nature can, did you one. All right. I can I can pick my skin off. You have to shed it. <laughs> <laughs> Rub up against a rock and hope it does the job. We just got a shirt order. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, we still have a lot of the his and her shirts on the website. Um, we are going to get to the point in the next three months where we always have clothing in stock. Yes. Um, we are reprinting the accountability shirts with pink instead of red. Like that? Yes. We are going to be doing a prioritize, execute, and burn the fucking ships hoodie. Mm -hmm. Same thing for the t-shirt. I want to do the protect her shirts. Again, but for actual for to be better, not just and I want to do stickers for that. OK, um, I want to do the journals, which I'm I'm working on. I've already got the quote. I sent the, the proof over. I'm waiting on the guy to give me a proof back. And if so, I'm going to move forward on the journals. Really nice leather journals. I'm yeah. super stoked by that. Um, I want to do morale patches that are like the Velcro patches that we right, put on like our rated vests. Yeah. On our, yes. OK. Um, maybe even flags for like the gym bros who have that do CrossFit that have their own gym. That would in be their dope. garage, right? I would make a flag for women. Yeah, yeah, that would be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. It would be hot pink with white lettering on it, and it's gonna yeah. say something super badass. Yeah, something about being an Amazonian. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Zena ain't got shit on you. <laughs> <laughs> what was that chick's name from um, He Man? She-Ra. She-Ra, yeah. Yeah. That's how I felt today. Yeah. At Triumph, yeah. That's funny. After hey, this email, can I talk about that? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I, I got to be honest. I don't want to get into trauma dumping tonight. I don't. Okay. I, I I was holding back tears earlier. Yeah. I, I don't want to. I, I'm I'm very overwhelmed and like I was hoping I was hoping to record and just kind of decompress. Okay. And you started reading about her life and like we started reminiscing and I don't. I just. It's a lot. It's a lot. I I've got a lot going on in my brain right now. So. I love you. I love you too. We're doing a thing. We are. It just, it, so much has happened in such a short amount of time that it's just a lot. I like that I get to do it with you. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do it with anyone else. Me either. We're the chaos fire Elmos together. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm the meme of, of the guy sitting in the chair and everything's on, on fire. fire. And he's like, I'm fine. Everything is fine. Everything's great. That's me. And I'm the one who set the fire. <laughs> <laughs> Danish, can you paint that, please? Uh, anyways, I just wanted to, to, to plug the merchandise. So for you guys who are in the chat, as the moderators hear this, I'm sure the chat has said exclamation point merch at least five yeah. times by now. Um, but we are going to keep that going. We want to make sure that we all ha always have merchandise in stock for you guys. And we want to have things that rotate in and out. But we do want to have enough that we always have a stock. So we're not just doing limited drops. I've been averaging 10 to 15 packages going out every single day. That's dope. It is. Yep, it is. It's my morning routine now. I oh, wake you mean up you packaging them and and shipping them. Like I actually, ten to fifteen every single yeah. morning have been going out. 
I think that tomorrow will be the least one that we've done, but it's the weekend. So yeah. anyways. So back into the email, I put my man above everything and everyone else. And once I started doing that, he started to change for the better. Yes, he did. That's because how that works. We communicate so well. We don't do check-ins or anything. We don't have to do check-ins or anything. We know each other so well now that we can tell if something is wrong by our body language. Our intimacy is through the roof, which is, of course, real good. Him and I are one now. I honestly never thought that I would have a traditional marriage or have a husband that I do. But here I am saying with my chest that I fucking have it. I have a traditional marriage and a man that I would die for. We helped with that. We helped. I know. <laughs> I would do a lot of illegal things for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I honestly never thought that I would have a traditional marriage. Oh, I just read that. <laughs> we are getting ready to move to our new house on September 1st, and our, our business is absolutely flourishing. I love that. Our life is so dope, and it wouldn't have been like this if it wasn't for you and Peaches. I listen to you guys every day without fail. I sometimes listen to an episode more than once because more often than not, I hear something I didn't hear the first time. I do that. I do that too. Yeah, I do it a lot when I'm when I'm replaying the podcast back and and like I'm editing, I'll be like, "How the fuck did I miss that when she said that?" And I like I have to overlay and type my thought right over top of it because there's times that like you'll say something and like it just doesn't compute until yeah, afterwards. I noticed that. Yeah, but it's like it's small things sometimes, mm -hmm. like my kid instead of our kid, or it's that kind of shit that I normally miss. What, me saying that? Me saying it. When you're reading an email and people are saying things, yeah. sometimes the way they word shit will hit me while I'm editing. And oh. I'm like, I can't fucking believe I missed that while they were reading the email. Like, Gotcha. So you mean while I'm reading, not while making a point. Right. If I miss something while you're making a point, it's because I either can't keep up with your thought process or because I'm so fixated and I forget what I'm going to say. And I know you know that feeling. <laughs> I love to say you gave me a lot of shit for that. Yeah. A lot of shit for that. I've looked over and you're like... And I'm like, what are you doing? You're like, I'm trying not to lose my point. I'll go, talk fast, talk fast. Like, I get it. It's it's hard because sometimes you get that thing and you're like, this is a good one and I don't want to lose it. And it's very prevalent to what's being spoken about. Right. It happens. It's so hard <laughs> because you're a you're conducting the crazy train. Yeah. You're Ozzy Osbourne over here. Yeah. And I'm 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 trying to hold on. It's like that train going through India. And I'm holding on and I'm trying not to like lose my shit because. You're going wherever we're taking us. I'm like, no, but I need to get out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun conversing with you. Yeah. Yeah. You get so frustrated when we're having those long talks, though. Sometimes I do. Yeah. <laughs> there are times where I'm like, OK, all right. So it's gone. Farewell. I'll never remember you. <laughs> <laughs> when are you guys going live again? Because I want to try to make it to a live. But because of the time difference, it's hard. It's currently 730 here in South Africa. Oh, and it doesn't say what time she sent it. So we go live Sunday nights. 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes. We missed all of July because we didn't have proper working internet. Yeah. Which is why we started looking for a studio space. We got the internet shit sorted out, but now we have to to get, get that situated. I cannot fucking wait to have that studio, man. Me too. We can talk more about that when, when you're done talking about Triumph. Okay. Also, did you guys read my email that I sent in January on an episode? Because if you did, I missed it. I'm pretty sure we did. I'm fairly certain we did, yeah. Yep. You guys have become my, uh, my virtual friends because I'm always in your company during the day. I love it, and I love you guys. Thank you so much for reaching out. It means a lot. I love that she still listens. Yeah. It means a lot. Yeah. Knowing that she listens every day and she'll go back and re-listen to something. Yeah. I I never thought that we would have this. Right. I really thought we would do that first episode of the podcast and be like, okay, that was cool. Yeah, now, now what? what? Now what? Yep. That's exactly what I thought. Yep. Yeah. Here, here, look, you can take that a little bit further because of the, the, um, the meetings that we've had over the last 72 hours mm. and, and the consulting jobs that have opened up. Like there, this, this has become so much more than just a podcast for us. It has. And when this studio is done, I, I'm going, once the studio is done, right? So let's, um, look, can we do that first or you want to go right into Triumph? You can do the studio. The studio thing, if the studio thing plays out the way I expect it to play out, we're probably 25 to 30 grand in build out. 
Okay. Between cameras, couches, furniture, mobile walls, audio set equipment, up. set yeah, all of it. Probably probably need a, you know a month, maybe two to recoup that money and like with you know just to to pay everything off because I'm just put it all on credit cards get those airline miles and points. Yeah. So then we can take more vacations. Mm. Um, but once we do that, we can then start putting a budget away every month. So like when we get our deposits from certain things, we already allocate those money that money to things in our life so that we can put our normal money where it needs to go. Mm. But if we could take a fifteen percent or one full payment from something every single month and put it in a war fund and have a savings account or a business like our the American Express card could be mm. the business card. Um, so that when we reach out to a TikTok influencer or somebody who has a speaking fee, at that point I can email and go, Hey, what is your speaking fee? Not will you be on my podcast? Right. What's- because that changes the credibility of the conversation being had. I think it changes the credibility of the conversation. It's also, I feel like it's another level. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's not, hey, maybe you'll say yes. Maybe we'll hear back from you right. and say, we've leveled up. That's crazy. Yeah. But we're getting to that point. And I, I very, very much, 2024 is going to be a very different thing for us. 2024 is going, 2023 has been a fucking a uh, 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 tornado like this has been a, a whirlwind tornado of, of change and growth i yeah before the hurricane hit this is not what i thought our life would be no, not even a little bit we, we should have had seven tattoo shops by now yeah um that would have actually been the number we would have had seven by i would now. be tattooing yeah and i would still be running our businesses yeah. we would not be doing what we're doing uh you probably still would be a stay-at-home i would probably uh, tattoo maybe part-time yeah when you wanted to that yeah. was the goal um, but we, we, we would, our life would not be where it is now. And we had to redo our vision board and five years plan. But even the vision board has been, we've nailed that. We, we've, yeah. we've, our vision board is currently blank. It's leaning up against the wall, waiting on us to redo it. That's going to go into the studio. Like, I, I don't know. Anyways, 2024 is going to be big. And, and we're, I want to get to the point where like, I want Henry and Victoria Doss to come on the show, Okay. but I want to, to email them and be like, yo, are you guys ready to be on the show? Mm. I will pay for your plane tickets from North Carolina to Florida. I'll pick up at the airport. We can do the, the recording. And if you want to leave right afterwards, I'll take you back to the airport. If you're going to stay for a while, I'll pay for your flight. You guys yeah. can pay for your own hotel. That way, you know, you don't have to pay the travel expense, just the staying expense. But there are things that I would like to do in that scenario where we can do that with a lot of other people. Mm-hmm. They might be on hold, though. She's pregnant. Oh, that's right. She is. Mm-hmm. I remember that. So if, it might have to be a drive thing. Yeah, if that's a prolonged, say she gives birth, I don't imagine her flying out two months after no, her birth. Right. You know. Well, I, I don't think that she'll. I don't think that that invite will be had before she has the baby. Yeah. I think that invite will be had way before then. Okay. I, I gotta be honest. I I foresee if we can get this lease signed before September first, that studio will be done by August. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, by October. 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 The month after September. October. It won't take me long. I can get my, my guys to go in there and paint and shit while we're gone. I'll leave a key with Mike and have Mike go take care of all that. And then when we get back, like while we're in Vegas, I'll order all the furniture and yeah. just be there. I mean, it won't it won't take me much. I've gotten very efficient at doing this. The biggest thing is going to be getting with um, A&R Home Accents so that Adam and his brother can build the shit that I want built in there because I want rolling walls. Shout out to A&R. They're the one that built my whiskey wall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Free plug for those guys. Fuck it, you know. They also built the shelf for the window in the other room. Yeah, they've actually done a lot of work for me. They built a ten thousand dollar bathroom at, at the tattoo the shop, shop. Uh, and then they did a, a cheaper version of it at the other studio before the hurricane. Yeah. Anyways, um, we could. It, it would not be an unrealistic goal for us to start doing interviews by October and actually having people on our show that have a name. Yeah. And that's the goal. Like, there's there are certain people that I really want to fucking interview. And having a studio lends credibility because we're not asking, hey, we want to come over, talk on a microphone. That's the equivalent of being like seven years old and going, (laughs) you want to play? Yeah. You want to come outside and play? My mom got pizza rolls. We actually have pizza rolls. Is that a selling point? Yeah. That's funny. How was Triumph today? Let, was, let's let's hear about that whole experience. How was your drive to Triumph today? My ch- oh god, my drive to Triumph was a lot. Yeah, it was a was. lot. Um, I processed a lot. I came to a lot of realizations. Um, I've recognized that I am further into my BPD low than I thought I was. 
and um, the last 72 hours, just everything in life. I feel like I have been grounded in reality a little bit more. A lot. It's a lot. I cried. And then I jammed. And I felt good about myself. Stop it. I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I see you looking at me with love. You, um... Yep. I have watched you go through a lot in the last three days. Well, it's been the last like two weeks. It's been but, about a month. But it, it has um that pimple came to a head. Yeah. And popped on its own over the last three days. And it's popped at the most inopportune times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it has, but it hasn't disrupted anything in life besides us. Right. You know, like one of those moments was in the car on the way to Matrix. I had a full blown fucking episode. And it didn't affect the meeting. It could have though. It really could have. Oh my God. And there's a lot of growth there because you were we were able to resolve it while we were in the parking lot. Yeah. And like it wasn't I mean, some of it was us, but some of it was your emotional state. Like there's just there was just a lot. There's a whole lot that was happening there. I mean, a lot of com a lot has compounded this month. Right. Um, I think there was a massive catalyst for me. Dude, it's going to come down. It really is. I want to pick up Domino's too. <laughs> I think that's what I want for dinner. I want a thin crust pizza with extra sauce, no cheese, and a bunch of veggies. Sounds good. Um, yeah, uh, there was a catalyst. I figured out I've feel like fucking that dude from Always Sunny in Philadelphia with the whiteboard and all this strings String and everywhere. photos and yeah. shit and just how I feel because I feel like I understand myself. I'm like a molecular level now. Molecular. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I feel like I have broken down, broken down who I am as a spirit and pieced myself back together and I have a new it's still me that fucking thunder is getting bad <laughs> that's God out there going girl you're fucking doing it like <laughs> keep this shit up everything you're saying right now <laughs> um I don't know I view myself differently I view yeah. myself my 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 wisdom beard's a little bit longer and a little bit more white I'm reaching Gandalf status with that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for being patient with me. Yeah, I'm trying. You're doing really good. I know that you want to talk about Triumph. I know we're only an hour in. It's not going to happen. I'm going to reset the cameras so that it saves everything. Okay. And then turn everything back on so that you can talk about Triumph. And then if the power shuts off, we have to just sit down and do it again. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is much quieter now. Yeah. Peach's hair is wet. Yes. She did the plant thing. I did. We had a major thunderstorm. Not even four minutes before we had that weird chop, I got up, turned off all the camera equipment. Saved it. To make sure the thing, everything saved and nothing aired because I was like, the power's going to go out. Mm. And I sat down and we were talking and we were just about to get into the tramp thing. Power the went power out. power went out. So it's been a couple hours since we recorded. We were ni nice and fat and full. We had some pizza. Yeah. Disgusting, greasy, nasty pizza, which was very yummy to the taste buds, but very heavy on the gut. I feel good after eating it. I'm glad you feel good. <laughs> I did a lot of strenuous shit today, and my body was just craving that grease. And carbs. Yeah. I saw uh, Sierra posted on her Facebook page video of the four of you doing stuff, and I got to see you zipline. Oh, did you? Not just away from the camera, but to it, which was yeah. exciting, because I didn't get to see that earlier. Oh, that <laughs> I wish she recorded the rest of that. Yeah. Because that was like the first zip line. I did not nail that landing. No. I went into it, my feet hit the board, and I pushed myself back, and I'm like kicking my legs trying to get up to it. And they're like, <laughs> grab the rope. And I'm like, like grabbing the rope, and they're like, dumbass up here. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I was trying to like scoop my butt up onto the rug. Like a dog to, on a rug. To get up there, yeah. That's funny. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I wish, I wish I would have seen that. That would have been epic. Yeah. Um, 
I caused a lot of laughter today. Yeah. Uh, I was I was on my shit like I don't remember where we left off. I don't either. All right. Well, I got there. And Sierra texted me and she was like, we're here. Where are you? And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm in the parking lot. And she's like, I don't see you. And I'm like, oh, fuck me. <laughs> am I even in the right spot? Like, where am I? And when we pulled up, it divided into two separate parking lots. Mm. Don't understand why. But they parked in a different parking lot. So I had to. Gotcha. Um, so there were four of us. And the ladies gave me permission. So it was me, Sierra, Lindsay, and Stephanie today. I only know Sierra. So I met Stephanie and Lindsay for the first time. Super sweet, super encouraging. I was having panic attacks. And they were like, no, you're a boss babe. You got this. You're bad bitch. I'm living your life. And I'm like, you're right. <laughs> In trees, doing the spider monkey thing, trying not to die. <laughs> um, they put us in the harnesses. <laughs> And the first thing out of my mouth to these guides is, oh, this harness is nice for my autism. It's like a constant hug. <laughs> Didn't know how to respond. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is great for me. The compression's nice. Yeah. It helps my senses. Like, we got all of that on. Then we watched a eight minute how to video. And I was cracking jokes, being stupid the whole time. Like, there was one part where the instructor like skipped up to the ladder to get her little hook on there to climb it. And I'm like, well, now I'm going to do that. And if I fall and I hurt myself, well, it was in your instructional video. <laughs> and I was like, no, I can't do that. So glad I didn't because if I actually twisted my ankle, that would have ruined it for it me. It would have. Yeah. So we watched the informational thing and then we teetered around and we went to the demo course. I was terrified of the demo course. <laughs> demo course was maybe 10 feet off the ground. And we did the thing and there was a gentleman there helping us and he was super understanding to me being terrified. <laughs> of the demo course. Yes. I was scared. Um, got through it. That zip lining thing where you saw me come in, that was the demo course. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that was the demo course. No, that might have been like the actual first zip line when we completed right. the first course. Yeah, it looked like you were pretty high off the ground. That might have been the first course one. Uh, so we went through, knocked out the demo course. Sierra was petrified of the zip line. Like it took her probably five minutes to hype herself up and knock out that zip line. She was so terrified that it wasn't going to hold her. I get that. Yeah. I, get and I was that. like, no, girl, like you got this. You just yeah. got to. Those zip lines are actually meant to hold thousands of pounds. Yeah. And the reason that those zip lines have a weight limit is because the heavier you are, the faster you zip. Yes. We went, I, I've, I've gone zip lining a couple of times. Yeah. And the places have always had a 250 pound weight limit. Mm -hmm. My entire life, I've been between 275 and 325. And I've only been fat 325. At 275, I'm normally not, I'm, I'm husky. Like I'm not fat, I'm strong. Right. So I would always lie. And be like, yeah, I'm like 240, okay, 250-ish. <laughs> and uh, I had that fear of the zip line because I was like 290. I was big. Like I was muscular at the yeah. time. And um, I got up on the top of the tree and I looked at the guy and I was like, so what are these cables actually rated for? And he's like thousands. And I was like, then why do you have a 250-pound weight limit? And he's like, because the heavier you are, the faster you go. I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> and he looked at me and I was like, I'm 290. He's like, I didn't hear that, but you're going to have a blast. <laughs> And I was like, so it's not going to break. He's like, nope. I was like, all right, good. And he's like, go whenever you're ready. And yep. of course, I just launched right off that fucking thing. But yep. um, you, you got to commit. If you're going to die doing it, you might as well go having fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yep. I, I really enjoyed the zip lining. You know, we got through the first obstacle course. Uh, very intense. Very intense. I ripped my nail off. My nail's gone. Like, yeah, I'm so glad I didn't get to see that. Um, I ripped the skin off of my pinky. So that's just open wound. Um, lost one of my tunnels. <laughs> so it, I was a mess the whole time. Um, trying to think of like notable things that happened. There's a video that I posted to the Instagram where, so they had logs that swung back and forth and that's what you're walking across. Mm. I thought I was going to pee myself. And like I was standing there and I have one foot on the log and I have one foot on the platform. And like you can see me going, all right, bitch, just, just 
step. Just do it. You go. You're in control of your body. What's going to happen? Your hands stop working. That's normal. Just grab shit. Like you're on the thing. You're fine. And I took my deep breath and my foot left the platform and my mind went, no. And my foot landed and I just kind of stood there (laughs) like rocking. And then I took a step and I had two feet on the board and I was like, all right. And next one. And I took one step. <laughs> and I was like, all right. And then two feet on that one. And I was like, we did it. And it was like fucking snailed. There were people, kids. I'm talking like eight years old. Can I pass you? Okay. <laughs> I get it. I understand. Yes, you can pass me. Um, <laughs> you were getting passed by kids. I Yeah. <laughs> Little adventurous fuckers. They had no fear. No, they never do. None. There were five courses. I made it to the third one. <laughs> Second one, first course was not bad at all. Came in on the zip line, nailed it, felt like a spider monkey, got off, went down the ladder, got some water, chugged that shit, crushed it on my forehead, threw it in the trash can. Did you actually do that? No, I didn't, <laughs> but I really should have. <laughs> Just to like be intense in the moment. Yeah, that would have been good. Um, I, I really should have done that. You Second. probably would have hurt your head there. <laughs> you, I wouldn't have shown it. No, I know. I would well, have like I'd have heard about it. it afterwards, though, along with your pinky and pinky nail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was keeping you up to date on everything. Like, I finished that course and I texted you, I was like, I ripped my nail off, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, oh, ow, what? No. Yeah. <laughs> didn't phase me at all. My I, I didn't even feel it. I saw my nail flip up and it like, whew. I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, oh, that's part of me. <laughs> Just don't do the fingernail, eyeball, ears, and teeth thing. Um, it didn't bother me. I didn't. I, I was more focused on falling to my death than my nail coming off. But you're on it. Uh, you're you're there. Like you're- logically, I know that my body didn't understand that. It was like the lighthouse all over again. There was one point where I was standing on a log. So there was a log hanging vertically, and there's two metal bars I'm standing on next to the log and I'm standing on it and my knees are like I'm like deep breath it deep breath it deep breath it and I lift up my foot my foot's fucking huh and I was like okay and I lift up my other foot and it's just shaking in the air I'm like oh my god why am I doing this to myself it was a blast I might do it again I don't know but do you think you're gonna be okay flying yeah I've been in a plane before that's not what I asked you I didn't ask you if you've flown before. I asked you if you were going to be okay in a plane. I'm fine in a plane. So the lighthouse situation and Triumph, that is solely my body getting me through that shit. There's not, I'm not piggybacking on somebody. If you had me on your back going up that lighthouse, I wouldn't be phased. Because you're a sturdy person. You're solid. I'm not. Hmm. My feet, my body. There's... I looked at Stephanie today and there were people just zooming through that shit. The guides fucking flash through that. You got to think they do it all the time. Right. It's a daily thing for them. I was like their muscle mind connection is just on point. It's actually automated. Yeah. Because they've done it so much. It's just like walking around. Yeah. Um, Kyle. (laughs) Kyle was the guide who got me out of the trees. I tapped out. (laughs) So we got to the third obstacle. And there was a rock climbing thing and I started climbing the rock climbing thing and I'm getting to the top and the rocks are becoming less of grabbing and more of like, like your fingers are touching the wood. There's not, there's nothing to grip. My nails couldn't do it. I was like, I'm not breaking another fingernail off. Like these aren't acrylics. These are my real nails. I'm like, I'm not doing this again. So I climbed back down. There was a long ass line to get up there. And I'm the third one in our group to go up. I see Lindsay and Stephanie are already across the bridge waiting. They're getting past because they're waiting for us and <laughs> climbing this ladder to get up there. It, this, the third obstacle course was the highest one out of the three we've done so far. And I'm climbing this ladder and my little thing that's connected to my vest that's on the, so there were two different clips. There was my clip that I had to clip onto every obstacle that we went through. And then there were green clips that I clipped onto myself in case my thing failed. Right. Yeah. It's, it's redundancy. Right. So I'm climbing the ladder. The green clip connected to me is on a pulley mechanism and it's not moving. Like I'm having to pull this thing with me. Sierra is trying to pull it downward. So it's, I'm, we're trying to get me to go. 
and my clip on the rope going up, there are little oval shaped silicone pieces, like markings to go up. Mm. And I'm having to pull on my fucking thing, stepping down one, adjust the thing, push it past the oval up on top and then take two steps up. I have a bruise on the inside of my elbow actually because I had to hook my arm on the rope ladder Mm. to bend over to get my shit to go up. And then I would pull myself up with that Got to the top. I looked at, I looked across and I looked down at Sierra and there was like a 12 year old, a 12 year old that just came up the rock climbing thing. And I was like, what am I doing? I'm, I'm, I'm shaking again. We're higher up. That ladder experience peaked my anxiety because there were variables getting me stuck. And I was like, no, you got this. I was like, you did the first two. You're ziplining. You're doing great. You got it. And then this 12 year old comes up to me and I was like, you can go ahead. <laughs> And she was like, thanks. I was like, I just want you to know your courage is an inspiration to me. <laughs> <laughs> and she just looked at me and went, uh-huh, and kept going. She gave like, zero fucks about She you. did not care. And kept going. And then her mom comes up behind her and she's yelling for her daughter. And I was like, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> go on. <laughs> the longer I can take to procrastinate my ass going across that, I'm here for it. That's funny. So I get across the first bridge. And now I'm met up with um now I'm met up with Lindsay and Stephanie. Lindsay goes across, no problem. I look at Stephanie and Stephanie looks at me and she's like, I'm tapping out. And I was like, Oh my god, me too. I was like, thank you. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to do this by myself. I don't want to look weak. <laughs> so you, you literally were just waiting on somebody else to quit so you could quit? I couldn't. I couldn't be the first one to tap out. No, my pride <laughs> couldn't let me. Like, I 100% that person. I'll do it if you do it. <laughs> like, so she tapped out and I was like, great. And I, I sent you the photo of me hugging the tree. <laughs> I'm on this tiny, like, four by four wooden platform, 100 feet in the air, hugging this tree. While it's swaying. While it's swaying, right? Yep. People are getting past us. We're having to play musical climbing Clips. hooks. Yep. Like I'm ducking under people and people are like stepping over me and we're like, guide, (laughs) guide. And we're waiting and Kyle comes running like the fucking flash. And he was like, you guys want to get down? And we're like, "Uh uh-huh. And he was like, give me a minute, 30 fucking seconds. Like I'm not even facing. So the rope, the um, gapped wooden (laughs) bridge is this way. And the rope death trap is in front of me. And I'm just looking at the rope death trap. I can't even see anything over here. I'm just like, I can't do it. It's too fucking scary. I was like, if I let go of this tree, I'm going to (laughs) die. That's where my brain is totally illogical. I don't know what it is. My soul wasn't scared, but my body wasn't having it. And then all of a sudden, it's just like, bum, 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 bum. And the tree's moving really hard. I was like, this is it. And it turns out it was Kyle running across that bridge. I don't even think he was hooked up to the damn thing. Yeah. And he was just there. And he was like, I'm Kyle. You guys doing okay? I'm like, hi, Kyle. I'm terrified. And he was like, he looked at Stephanie. He was like, what's your name? And she's like, Stephanie. He's like, hi, Stephanie. He's like, we're going to get you out of here. And he looked at me. He was like, what's your name? I was like, my name's Chris. He was like, hi, Chris. You're all right. And I was like, okay. I'm the calmest dude ever. Like, I mean, you have to be. Right. And he's getting all this shit out of his bag, like different colored ropes and clips and whatnot. And he gets it all hooked up super quick. And he looks at Steph and he was like, all right, we're going to get you out of here. <laughs> and he gets her all hooked up and he was like, okay, Tower of Terror. And she was like, what? And he was like, you know, Pah. and she was like, no. And he was like, no, that's not what it's going to be. And he showed us how it's all hooked up and whatnot. And he lowers her down and I'm just holding on to the tree. And I was like, Stephanie, just so you know, you still look really cool. <laughs> Even <laughs> though you tapped out and you're being repelled down by Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> and she got to the bottom and then Kyle looks at me and he's like, are you ready? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, all right, to the elevator shaft or whatever. And like, he's hooking me up and whatnot. <laughs> whatnot. And I looked at Kyle and I was like, Kyle, can I play a song? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, why not? And I started playing the SWAT theme song <laughs> from the show. <laughs> Sierra behind me is laughing her ass off. And Kyle's looking at me. He was like, 
okay. And you like, weren't even repelling. He was I lowering you. I wasn't even <laughs> repelling. He, he was using his body weight to lower my ass. <laughs> I'm just sitting there dainty, pretty as shit. Like, um, he didn't even know it was a SWAT theme song yeah. until I said it. And then he lost his shit. That's funny. When I told him it was like, I was like, yeah, it's the SWAT theme song. He's just started laughing. I was like, how? I don't think anybody has ever requested right. to play. I'm, sh- I'm sure no one's requested that. <laughs> and I get up to the thing and he was like, all right, sit down. And I was like, what do you mean sit down? Like, so I, I, I fucking legs go up and I'm just dangling there. And he was like, Tower of Terror. And I was like, Tower of Terror guy. Like, if that's how I got to go. And he starts lowering me. And I said, I don't see why I ever paid Disney for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I get down to the bottom and I had that video is, I think I sent it to you. Hey, where you lose your footing? Uh, no, I didn't lose my footing. I just, there was no connection with the earth. I hit the earth and my body just hit the tree, like stable. We're okay. And I unhooked my thing and there were people cheering for us and shit. <laughs> I should have done like the fucking Rocky thing. Like, ah, I tapped out. <laughs> and then I crossed the thing. I looked up, Kyle's gone. He's gone off to save somebody else. It was insane to me how often God. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Stephanie and I were the first to tap out. So we're on the ground. We're like, this is fantastic. Love it down here. This is awesome. Not a bird. I am not meant to have myself in the air by myself like that. Not a spider monkey. I mean, I kind of tried. I did get more comfortable the more that I did the things. So (laughs) I looked at Stephanie. I was like, I might have to have my husband build like a ninja warrior thing in my backyard. (laughs) That way, next time we do this, I have some practice. I think the worst thing was for me was I don't have balance. So my, I don't have a center of anything. Yeah. (laughs) Always just fuck. Um, there was a group of teenage boys there. I'm so glad I'm not a teenager anymore. Yeah. Oh, they were causing a ruckus and getting in trouble with the guides and shit. And it got to the point that they caught up with us. And I was like, I'm so glad I tapped out. Like, I don't want to loud and rambunctious and talking about chicks on Instagram. One dude was like, yeah, she has her fat tongue out in every single photo. And I was like, (laughs) so ladies and gentlemen, that's what (laughs) men think about when you're going in your photos. I was like, yeah, that it. I almost looked at him and I was like. I almost did. I was like, no, I don't want it. Don't encourage it. Jumping. You should have encouraged it. I should have been like, those are the girls you don't want. Jumping. Yeah. Here, um, here's, here's a business card for our podcast. <laughs> You're young still. My husband can teach you some things about life. I should have done that. I should have had <laughs> cards in my pocket. Um, there was one point. It, it's crazy how busy it got. Yeah. And there was one point I'm standing, I'm like taking pictures of Sierra and Lindsay up there doing their thing. And out of my left ear, I, I hear a dude Doing the scene from a Grinch going, ooh, oh, ah, that's it. I'm not going. And he called for the guy and he got repelled down. I was like, holy shit. Just it was fucking fantastic. Funny. I looked at him. I was like, was that the scene from the Grinch? And they were like, yeah, it was great. You know that it got to 102 in Sarasota today. I believe that. It was fucking hot. I I believe that. When I pulled into the Mercedes dealership after doing... After going very fast on the interstate, <laughs> my car read 102. How did I get there so fast before you? I, yeah. You're speeding. <laughs> How did I get home before you? <laughs> to be fair. To be fair. To be fair. You were in Bradenton. I was. And I was in Sarasota. Yeah. But you left while I was at the Mercedes dealership still. Yeah. We should not have. It shouldn't have happened. And I know I didn't pass you because I was looking. Were you? Mm-hmm. You'd have seen me. Yeah. A little white blur. <laughs> Right by you. High speeds. (laughs) Sierra was the only one who completed the third course. Yeah. Lindsay tapped out. Is there only three courses? Just five. That fifth course is like fucking. Did anybody do the fifth? No. Nobody. We didn't even go on to the fourth. (coughs) Did Sierra quit because everybody else had already tapped out and she just wanted to. I think she was done. Hmm. Yeah. Um. We did the Triumph zip line. So me, Sierra, and Stephanie did that. Lindsay got a heat stroke, overheated. She's so flush, very red, nauseous. Like, it, I believe it got that hot outside. Yeah, it wasn't a heat stroke, but yeah. Yeah. 
She had a heat stroke. She didn't end up in the hospital. No, I don't know what it yeah. is. Um, but yes, it is like that right now. Um, I have not sweat that much in a very long time. Like I, after an hour of being out there, my shirt was soaked. Mm-hmm. That's why when you're like, hey, let's and I'm like, no, it's outside. Let's see. So we did the Triumph Zimp line. And that was the easiest walk up out of everything. It was just boardwalk all the way through. I was getting it. And like, I tried to get like the little thing on my. Yeah, we, we bought an Insta. What is it? The Insta 360 camera. And you were getting ready to leave this morning. And you're like, I'm going, babe. And I'm like, OK. And I'm like, wait, as you're closing the door. Yeah. And I was like, take the, the camera. And I jumped out of bed and I grabbed it. and It wasn't charged. It was not charged. And I also didn't have that idea until you went to wake me up this morning. Cause, but I thought that would have been great footage of you spider monkey in. Oh, it would have. The shit that I was saying, I was hilarious. That just means that when it starts to cool off and it's not 102 degrees outside, when it's like 90 degrees outside, 80 degrees outside, we should do that. Okay. Yeah. I might get further because I can't bitch out. In front I, of I think that you would probably outdo me on that. Yeah. When I saw you guys standing on the, the logs that had the ropes attached. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing the way that it feels when you stand on a swing, everyone as a child has yes. stood on a swing holding on to the chains. Yeah, your feet go forward. Yeah, there's a whole lot of fear in letting go of that in that moment. Like you have to to steady yourself. Yeah, it, there's I I don't know if I would be able to do that. Even though that I'm on a harness and like everything is rigged up, mm-hmm. I don't think that I would be able to make the steps. Yeah, I think that I would experience the leg thing that you experienced and like I would freeze. Yeah. There was a point where Sierra, it was like that, but it was, you had to walk this way across it. It was one long log connected and you had the thing here and she was having that issue for probably three or four minutes where she would stabilize herself, make a move and her whole body would just back and forth. It's a lot of, it's a lot of stabilizer muscles to to make that work. Yeah. I use muscles today. I didn't even know I had. You're going to be sore as fuck tomorrow. Like... I'm actually pretty proud of myself because there was a point where I was swinging like that and like my whole body, like I stiffened my whole body like a rock and like I just waited for it to stop and I took my first step and I was like, yeah, that's right. That's the control I need. There was like five seconds. The only time I did it through that whole obstacle course where I was able to like stabilize myself that way, but I was very proud of it. How was your zip lining experience? Um, <laughs> so I was the first one to go across the Triumph zip line and it's the longest zip line of the whole thing. So my, the zip line harness, so we had our climbing hook thing. It's a carabiner. Carabiner. And then we had the cart to zip line. There wasn't a brake. It was the carabiner as our brake that we pulled on to slow us down. Which was in front of the trolley, which doesn't make sense Correct. to me. Because every time I've ever zip lined, your hand is your brake. They put you in really thick leather gloves mm-hmm. and then give you an additional padded leather piece that goes around your wrist and on your hand. Yeah. So you hold on to the trolley with one hand, which is how you can steer which way your body's facing. And then as you go to brake, you lean back mm-hmm. and you put your hand on the cable behind the trolley cup. Because if you put it in front, you can rip your fucking fingers off. Right. And can like really do damage. So them putting the carabiner in front of that trolley, they've got to be going through carabiners. You would think that that steel cable and you pulling down on that would eat through that steel eventually. Like I don't know. I don't know. I don't either. I wasn't there. I've, yeah. I've never been there. And you would think as much as I enjoy ziplining, I'd have been to that place because it's like an hour from here. Yeah. But um, but like I got I got my thing clipped on and I put on my trolley, and I was immediately nervous because this was the highest point that I had been at through the obstacle courses, and the way that I had to clip my trolley on, I was leaning out over the platform. So I had that fear of falling forward and I couldn't tell if it was on the track properly. Right. Instantly anxious. (laughs) And I'm deep breathing. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. And I looked at Sierra. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. And she was like, no, you got that. And she was like, oh, look, Kyle. (laughs) And Kyle's walking along the bottom and he saw us up there and he was like, and I was like, okay. And I was like, I can't get rescued a second time. So I'm up there and I'm squatting down and I took a deep breath and I just jumped and I go and I'm going fucking fast and my body turns. So I'm facing them as I'm moving away and panic kicked in because earlier I saw a dude hit his back against the tree. They just had this really thick green padding around the tree and like he hit it and I, I heard the one. Huh. I, like, I don't want to do that. So like, I'm, I'm like trying to like kick my legs to get myself to go around and it's not working. And in the video you can hear Sierra go. 
oh no, is she slowing down? She's losing momentum. And she was like, did she make it? I didn't, I did not make it. I get all the way down there and I'm still facing backwards and I come to a complete stop. <laughs> and I just kind of like kick out my legs and I hold on to the string for a minute and I'm like, I did this to myself because I panicked. Yeah. I braked, I broke, I, I pulled the thing and I lost my momentum and now I have to pull my ass the remaining like 50 feet to get to the thing. And I didn't think to turn myself. So I'm like, I'm pulling this way. Hardest thing I've ever done with my arms. I would pull two or three times and my arms would give out. And I would just sit there and, like, oh, fuck. and I'd get back up and I'd pull two or three times and my muscles are just screaming at me. Well, you're pulling uphill at that point. I am. Yeah, I was pulling uphill. So like I turned around and I started pulling this way. I was like, oh, this is kind of easier. And I pulled myself all the way over and I get up onto the platform and I'm figuring my shit out. And I was like, what an experience. I would, I would love to do that shit again. <laughs> and I, I looked down at the staircase and there's a guide walking up. And he looked at me and he was like startled. And I was like, hi. And he was like, is there somebody stuck? I was like, no, that was me. And he was like, oh, okay and just tootled back down i was like well thanks for coming like thanks for checking on me he was like have a good day like i i don't know he was very shocked that you pulled yourself i in. guess so i don't know i'm shocked that they don't have somebody on the other side of that zip line holding a safety rope to make sure that you stop before you hit the tree that's dangerous like you hitting a tree at 40 miles an hour it this is not a cartoon you're not right. wily coyote like you can really fuck your body up yeah um there wasn't anybody standing at any of the end of the zip lines. It was us. So in North Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia area, when you go zip lining, there are two guides that goes up. One one that stays on the, the, the back platform and one that stays on the receiving platform. Right. And there is a rope that is tied around the cable that is relatively long. And it's done with a bowling knot, I believe. It's very tight on there. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's anyways. Uh, anyways. So you can be fucking getting it. And not slow down and your trolley will hit that rope and it'll just fling your body forward. Yeah. And like you could maybe potentially kick the guide. That's probably mm -hmm. going to be the worst that's going to happen. But you're not hitting the tree or anyone else on the platform. Right. And they tell you that like and, and that rope will move. The knot will move back mm -hmm. based off of your speed. But you're not going to slam into the tree. It, it's very wild to me that there is not a safety mechanism to prevent people from hitting the tree. No. Stephanie came in behind me. Um. And like, it took me a minute to get up there. So I got up there and I yelled the all clear and I had my shit all out of the way. And I'm waiting for her to come in and I hear her getting it Wing. like, yeah. and she, she's not slowing down. And I'm like, I'm kind of like, okay, like, do I stand here and wait for her? Like, do I try to catch her or yeah. do I just kind of get out of the way? Cause I'm not trying to get hurt. She came in hot as shit. Yeah. She hit the tree. She came in right into the fucking tree. Like she turned her head and like, literally like splat and i was like hold like are you okay and she's like yeah i'm good she was like i was coming in hot and i was like Did you yeah. feel a whole tree move uh yeah it was definitely like a that's wild it was a larger platform there were two zip lines connected to two trees so it wasn't like it was one tiny right. platform but she definitely that's wild to me that there's no safety mechanism in place at that place no was it just like the blue gym mats wrapped around the tree yeah like the school gym mats? very thick green ones wow. yeah Crazy experience. I had a lot of fun. We need to do we need to do the the zip line tours in, in North Carolina and then do whitewater rafting. Oh hell yeah. Okay. That's gotta wait until it gets cooler outside though, because I'm not I'm not doing the sun thing. Mm -mm. Zip lining is a lot of fun. It's the closest thing that you're gonna get to like a squirrel suit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. The idea of jumping out of an airplane doesn't do it for me. I think that I would give myself a heart attack. Yeah. But the idea of zip lining because I've done it so much is just, it's fun to me. You know, I don't know. I'm glad you had a good day today. I'm glad that yeah. you went out with the girls. I know that you were questioning like your morning. Yeah. I had a pretty rough morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you did it. I did do it. And yeah. you had fun because you came home and you were on cloud nine. You still had that um, endorphin high going yeah i know because you didn't kiss me when you walked in the door and you were psycho babble for about 20 <laughs> minutes before i finally went so are you gonna kiss me now that you're home or no and you're like oh shit i totally forgot <laughs> yeah i did um I, I i did i had a lot of fun today this was needed it was needed but it, it was also different it 
they didn't want to go to a bar. You know, it wasn't nine o'clock at night. I just almost said a very well-known bar near us. Yeah. Well, I mean, it wouldn't matter. We don't ever go there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But you had a daytime adventure friend with people who have goals and aspirations that are not to get fucked up all the time. Yeah, it was neat. It was a lot of fun. Um, We all agreed that next time maybe Bush Gardens. For what? Like roller coasters and shit? Yeah. Like the adrenaline kick was dope. Um, Very intense, though. Yeah. Very intense. I get sick on roller coasters. Yeah. I, I get motion sickness like you wouldn't believe. And it's because I'm not in control. Yeah. And I know it's because I'm not in control because I've done high triple digits on a a bike. No problem Mm -hmm. between cars, like stupid high speed shit. Perfectly fine. You get me on even a simple wooden roller coaster and I get off. I'm like, huh? everything. My stomach hurts. Like I'm I'm dizzy. It's it's weird. And it doesn't just go away. Mm -hmm. The last time I went on a roller coaster, I went on the Hulk at at, uh, Universal. Yeah. And I was like, I wonder if this is still a thing. Still a thing. It is for about two hours after the roller coaster. I was oh, sitting wow. in one of the cafes, sweat profusely, like in massive amounts of stomach pain. That's what I'm saying. It was bad. Yeah. I wonder how I would be on a roller coaster. My first roller coaster ever was Sheikra at Bush Gardens. Yeah. Mine was, well, I don't remember the first one ever, but the last one that I rode that I enjoyed without getting sick was um, the Kumba. Is that right? Is that? Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Yeah. It was also Bush Gardens. So, but we went on yeah. like five times in a day. Had a fucking blast. The mm-hmm. motion sickness came later in life. Yeah. I think it's because I'm so used to being the one behind the wheel and, and controlling the vehicles that like when it's not, it's a problem. Mm-hmm. I used to get motion sickness from flying too, but I've done so much of that now that it doesn't phase me. Yeah. If you, if you wanted to do a girl's day at Bush Gardens, I support that. Yeah. But yeah. I think that would be good for you. Yeah. It was very nice. You know, um, Sierra, not, not Sierra. Sierra is not a mom, but Lindsay and Stephanie are both moms. So we had like that little mom talk while we were out there, which was pretty neat. Yeah, it was dope. Are they all married? Yes, all of them are in a relationship. Not not all of them are married, but all of them are in a relationship and they have families and stuff. That's good. That's good. That means you have a whole lot more in common. Yeah. Um. Hope they like me. Yeah. Well, I mean, you just message Sierra and ask her. She'll tell you. I mean, we're all in a group chat now. So we were like sharing pictures and they're still chatting in there and whatnot. You think they'd want a kayak and shit? You know, we got kayaks in storage. That would be dope. I yeah. love kayaking. And we now have a truck to take the kayaks around. It's not like we have to stick them in your Jeep. Yeah. It's too hot for that shit. If we went to like Silver Springs, which is up, it's northern Florida, and we took two vehicles, we could drive the kayaks to the drop off point, leave them at the drop off point, take them to one of the vehicles to the exit ramp Mm -hmm. leave the truck at the exit ramp to take the kayaks back out and then drive the jeep back up park at the entry and go downstream that's smart so you go with current yeah super fucking easy you don't have to paddle against anything you see the wildlife you can take pictures you could really just sit in your kayak and do nothing other than steer Mm -hmm. that's my fucking idea of kayak yeah yeah i'm not trying to go against the current i'm not trying to go (laughs) in the ocean um there's a couple places nearby that you can kayak that doesn't really have a current and when Mm -hmm. it is it's very minor but there are a lot of fucking alligators out there and when most of the time an alligator will see a kayak and go okay that's bigger than me and not fuck with your kayak Mm -hmm. unless it's mating season and i learned that the hard way i had an alligator hit my kayak and it scared the jesus out of me Mm -hmm. yeah I'm, i'm not an apex predator Without yeah. technology. I'm a squishy sack of potatoes with bones in them. Mm, a snack. Yeah, I am a, a crunchy morsel mm. that is good with ketchup to an alligator. I'm good on that. That's a no for me, dog. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do more stuff like I did today. Yeah. It was neat. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Well, what else is there to do like that? Um, I didn't even know that existed. Yeah. So. Well, I knew that it existed. Um. I just, it's so hot outside in Florida that I always do that shit when we go on vacation. But what else would you want to do? I'm down to do anything once. Would you bungee jump? I would. Would you really? Yeah. Even though you're afraid of heights? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Why? Experience it. That's something else. All I can think of is all those bad videos where people have flung back up and hit the bridge or their bungee snapped or that fucking 
<clears throat> at the bottom. Yeah, it brings you back up. I would go skydiving. I have it in my brain. I know this will probably never happen, but if I had the opportunity to at least attempt to scale Mount Everest, I would also do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole lot of training. I know. I Do I think I'd make it to the summit? No. Yeah. You, I would probably never make it to the summit, but I would definitely try. Do you know that you can skydive in Punta Gorda? Uh, I did know that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'm good on that one. I think I'd be good. I'd be strapped to somebody. Yeah. I'm not pulling my own cord. I don't have to figure that shit out. Just along for the ride. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess that takes takes away your fear thing. Oh, yeah. You said that you'd be okay if you were the passenger being carried up the stairs versus having to walk up the stairs. Yeah. That makes sense. I don't know if I'd want to be strapped to another person. You wouldn't. You have to be in control of things. Right. And that's my problem. So, yeah. like, if I was to ever skydive as a newbie, you have to be strapped to another oh. person. They don't give you an option. You have to log so many jump hours before they can let you do it on your own. Mm. And you have to take courses and shit to make sure that you're not going to just plummet to your death. Yeah. But the idea of having another guy behind me, nut to butt, doing the fucking, I'm oh, going to yeah. save your life thing. I, I'm sorry, bro. I don't trust <laughs> anybody that much. It really is nut to butt, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Oh, now that kind of makes me uncomfortable. I don't want to be that close to somebody. I don't want. I, I don't. I don't know. Putting my life in somebody else's hands. What if they had a fight with their woman? That <laughs> right. Today's the day, and you're going with me. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, because you know, I would have people that were that scared, and right before we jumped out the plane, be like, "I just want to let you know, my wife divorced me this morning," and I would jump out the plane, bro. I'm ruining lives. Like, it's gonna be the most <laughs> terrifying fucking ten seconds of your life. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get on the ground and be like, did you piss yourself? <laughs> I just want you to know that my wife called me and we lost everything in a fire 10 minutes before we took off. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Dark humor. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you say divorce? Hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you seen those ride operators where like they get up to the top? And they do like a count. I'll be like, all right, guys, on the count of five. One, two. Pwah. Yeah. Love it. I haven't been on any of those rides in a long time either. No. Nope. The only ride that I have ever been on in any type of anything that has actually scared me is a Ferris wheel. Really? Why yep. did a Ferris wheel do it? Um, Because they stopped it. At the, I was young. Yeah. I was young, young. I was like 10 or 11, maybe. I probably was younger than that. They stopped it at the top and the person that was in the cage with me because they rock was making it rock back and forth. Mm. And I was already not wanting to be in there. Like I was having fear of the like the, the shit breaking down. It was like a traveling circus kind of thing. Yeah. And the more they they did shit, the worse my fear got. By the time I got off that thing, I was a sobbing mess. I was fucking terrified. That's fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. I ruined the entire trip over that. Apparently, I got in trouble for that, for being afraid and acting the way that I was acting. Wow. I was I was traumatized from that shit. I will never go on another Ferris wheel as long as I live. Roller coasters only make me motion sick. I enjoy them. They're a lot of fun. I don't like the way it makes my body feel afterwards. But I wonder if I rode them like and just suffered through that three or four times, if that motion sickness would go away. Oh, I don't know. I don't either. Dramamine. Lots of Dramamine. Yeah. But I don't want to risk that feeling. The last time I did that, that was that was horrible. We have to find other adrenaline things for you so that you and your little four squad of, of adrenaline junkies can get the your fix. Yeah. I would try surfing. Yeah. Yeah. Drowning doesn't do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to the beach and watch you do it. Yeah. Yep. As long as it's cold outside. <laughs> If we found an indoor surfing place, I would try that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care if I eat shit falling. I mean, it's yeah, it's going to hurt. But right. Worst comes to worst, I'll just get stuck in a perpetual wave and roll like a <laughs> donut going down a hill. <laughs> like a fucking stick. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> like one of those Tokitos sitting on the grill at 7-Eleven. Yeah, that would be me. <laughs> just stuck in a perpetual wave going, <gasps> trying to breathe. <laughs> oh my god could you imagine it's a video a, a intro with me and i'm like doing the fucking surfing thing and i'm nailing it and it pans over to you and you're just pop 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 yeah. pop 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 <laughs> have you seen those videos where people get stuck I in have, that yeah. yeah that's funny 
I saw a video once. I think it was at a water park. Like they had the simulation wave going on. And there was a kid just nailing it, like fucking doing the surfing thing. And then just out of the side view, this woman comes over and she just knocks into him. It's fucking chaos. Like, yeah, I felt bad for that kid. That's funny. Well, do you have anything else? Because this puts us close to two hours. Um, No, not really. I did really enjoy today. Yeah. Yeah. Being active with my body. I looked at the girls and I was like, I'm doing shit with my body. I never thought I'd be doing. Yeah. Yeah crazy it we, felt really good we should look into rock climbing like, uh, like okay in, in indoor, indoor rock climbing maybe when we're in vegas they have an indoor rock climbing place at the palazzo i'm gonna have to get my nails trimmed yeah well yeah yeah but we can do that before we leave yeah do the rock climbing thing i wanted to do the last time i was there for the olympia and i didn't why because i thought it was included in my hotel stay because i stayed at the venetian mm-hmm. and when i asked the guy he was like it's 150 dollars i'm like what He's like, yeah, it's $150 a climb. I'm like, but I have a room here. Right. He's like, that doesn't matter. You still have to pay to climb the ropes. I'm like, so there's a gym here that I can use for free. And there's a rock climbing wall here, but I don't get to use it unless I pay for it. It's not a free amenity. And he's like, nope. I'm like, so that's fucking dumb. Yeah. And I refuse to pay that and I'm leaving. And it sucks because that time that I was in Vegas, I was close to my peak like physical strength and like stature. I would have made it up that wall like a fucking spider, dude. Yeah. I, I think I probably could have done it without using my legs. Wow. Yeah. I There was a, there was a, it wasn't a very long time in my life, but I did CrossFit for a while. And during that time that I was doing CrossFit, I, I, I there were certain things that I worked on more than others. And I, I got a six minute mile. It was the only time in my life I've ever had a six minute mile, which I had to work really fucking hard for. Um, and I was able to climb rope hand over hand with no feet from a seated position. Um, so you would, st- I would just start in a seated position with my legs out in front of me and I would just hoist myself right up to the top of the rope. I have video of me doing pull-ups with my hands holding onto a two inch rope with a 35 pound kettlebell between my legs. Wow. No problem. I was, I was in good shape. So looking at that wall, I was like, I fucking got this. It'd been fun, yeah. but I just wasn't willing to spend $150 to climb up a wall that was going to give me 10 seconds of enjoyment, you know? And it wasn't like a rotating wall. It was an actual wall that was mm-hmm. built out. I I should have done it. It's a regret. I should have done it while I was there. Yeah. I just didn't. Just didn't. Can do it next time. We can do it next time. Mm-hmm. Um the the sphere. Have you seen that that thing? It's just a giant LED fucking TV thing that's a dome that it's like an arena. Okay. Um my sister wants me to take pictures of it while I'm out there. I don't think I actually will because it is a, a structure. It's not really my thing. But that's also at the Venetian now, so like Hmm. there's a lot that we can do without actually leaving the strip. Okay. I also want to see what kind of tournaments are playing. Cause I would like to play a tournament while we're there instead of playing a cash game. Okay. So I wish we could play poker more than once a week. We might be able to, uh, we have the, the, the normal players that we had last night are, have already confirmed for next, uh, next week. And then, uh, John comes back from Vermont soon and Travis is now wanting to play. So there could be potential for other games and we are close enough to a casino that if we wanted to just take a day off and go to a casino, we could, we would just have to find tournaments that are worth the buy-in to do that. So yeah, I need to play poker more. I've only played two games. Yeah. Yeah. I talked about that in my blog. Why? Poker, your poker game. Why? I talked about you a lot in my vlog today. Why? You, cause, cause just because I know you're not going to watch them. I was talking all kinds of shit. Wow. Saying I'm a better poker player than you and you could suck the fart out of my ass. I'm just kidding. Because okay. <laughs> I know you don't watch my shit. And one day you're going to sit down and binge watch all my shit and you're going to come in crying and you're going to be like, I can't believe you said all that stuff. That's probably going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not in Discord. I know. And I don't know when you post your vlogs and I'm just so preoccupied with the shit in my brain. You are in Discord. I see you comment and talk to people in there. You just oh, don't very watch rarely videos. though. Yeah, I'm not in there like I used to be. Yeah, I used to sit on the couch for like thirty or forty minutes and converse with people. Mm. I don't do that anymore. I don't have the brain capacity for it. Life happens. That'll come in waves. That's your borderline. So, what did you talk about with me and poker? You have to wait and watch. Tell me, please. You don't have to get into Discord to watch it. If you guys want to know what was said in the blogs, you can subscribe to our Patreon channel. Shameless plug. Mm-hmm. You ready to call it a night? 
Yeah. Good, because the couch is calling my name. Dope. Remember, guys, you are the author of your own life. So grab a pen. And we will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.